Hi everyone, welcome to Wine and Canvas. Today we're going to paint this picture, the Lighthouse Keeper. We'll be using several brushes that we normally use. We'll be using our number one, our number two, our number three, and our number four. Starting with the smallest brush first. If you don't already have your water cup ready, go ahead and pause your video at this time, get your water ready. If you want to go ahead and cover your clothes, put an apron on, or we can go ahead, uh, myself, I usually go ahead and just paint whatever I'm in, but your, talk, your paint is non-toxic, so if you by chance accidentally maybe to put your brush in with your drink or vice versa, it's okay and if you do get some on your clothes make sure to launder it today or tomorrow and it will come out I appreciate everybody coming out today and let's go ahead and get started on our picture we're going to start out with putting a little bit of white on our canvas and I'm just going to put this in some of the areas where I know that I'm going to be blending it and I need just a little bit of lighter areas. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there now. I'm also going to be putting a little bit of white. I'm going to add a little blue to this. I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of black. I want it to make it almost like appear like there's a little bit of gray going on too in the sky right before there's maybe um, a storm is kind of what I'm trying to pick up a little bit. And if I need to add a little bit more white to blend this in, I'm using kind of a crisscross method of going back and forth, making sure that I get my paint deep into the weave of the canvas. Now after this dries, it does change it a little bit, and it always changes a little bit depending on where you're painting. If, you're, if you if um, you change and you're in one studio, or for myself, I go to other studios, sometimes it's going to be a little bit difficult to get that same color that you've had before. Because light does change, you're in a different environment, the uh, actual maybe the outside your lighting might have been a sunny day and then it was a rainy day so things change a little bit you're not always going to have exactly the same so if it doesn't come out that way um, that's that's kind of good it, it uh, just shows a little bit more of your own personality your own individual style if you get a little bit more into it you can always add a little bit more light or a little bit more dark depending on the color that you want to add into it. So if it changes a little bit, that's okay. It always is just a very, very unique individual style. Sometimes after I get that brushed into there and I'm going back and forth, depending on if I am doing my sides also, if I'm going to be hanging it right on the wall, Instead of putting it in a frame, you can also do your sides of your canvas. It's easier to do your sides in the, while you're actually painting your canvas than to go back and try to do that same thing again. Now in some of this area over here, I wanted to make it just maybe a little bit more pinker. my sky. If I get a little too much, go ahead and you can get um, some more white on there. You can even add a little bit more blue. And then it kind of makes it into more of a purple in the sky, just a tiny bit. Just adding a little bit of blue and black making this kind of gray. If your brush gets a little bit too dry and starts really dragging on you, you, you need a little bit more water or a little bit more pigment on your brush. 
Again, I'm just kind of doing this crisscross method, going back and forth, trying to blend it into my canvas. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of brown with this. I'd like to see it just a tad darker. And maybe start in to get some of this almost a green color of my ocean coming through in some areas. I'm just going to lay a little bit down where I know that I want maybe some of this color going on. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of white then. If I want it to be a little darker, I pick up a little bit of blue, a little bit more of the black. I had a little bit of brown on my brush. Some of this area I want it to be a little bit darker towards the base of where my land is going to be. I'm also going to pick up a little bit of purple here in the blue. I'm not really even um, rinsing my brush out. You'll see me tap it a little bit just to kind of get the color that I'm getting. I want to get it really saturated in the bristles of my brush. This is going to be basically where my land will meet the sea. And I'm going to be about a whole brush and then maybe about an inch. So right here is going to be where my land, and this is just for my own eye. And don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be exact uh, line. You get out of the line, don't worry about it. This is your C anyway. But this is kind of where my ocean is going to meet up. Again, I'm just picking up a little bit of black and with this blue. Now there is going to be some like maybe some landscape in the background and you can kind of just sketch that in so you know kind of where it is going to be. But I'm still working right now into my background of my sky. Blending that in, and when I do have to blend it in a little bit, I'm picking up with just a tad of white in there. Just mixing that in. If it starts to pixelate out on me a little bit, like it is here, that means I've either not got enough water, or I've not got enough pigment on my brush, and I need a little bit more to be able to move that around a little bit. And if I still want to make that a little bit deeper, darker blue, in some areas I still can. In some areas I'd even like to see more of the purple, kind of a deeper color come out almost to maybe the royal. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of white to kind of blend this in a little bit. Since this is a really rough seascape, the sky has probably got a lot of clouds, pretty turbulent right now, so it doesn't have to be like perfect little sweet little clouds. You don't want that right now. You want it to look pretty, pretty dark, pretty gloomy.
some cases I'm adding just a little bit more black here into this cloud. I want it to be a little bit deeper, darker in my sky. A lot of times you'll hear me like tap my brush out a little bit so I don't have an abundance of water. I don't want my brush to drip and a lot of times if you have too much liquid on your water on your brush you will get some drips so just to prevent that a lot of times I will tap my brush out just to make sure I don't get that and I'm just doing the sides of my canvas because this will probably just go up on a wall and not in a frame at this time but that's a personal preference for yourself if you want to put it in a frame at a later date you can Now I'm just kind of moving some of my paint around. So in this area where this is not blended and has kind of dried up against this other, I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of white and a little bit of this gray a little bit to my brush here. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing we did before, kind of blend that around. If I feel like I need a little bit more blue into that. To me, that might be a little bit wet, so I want to make sure that I can blend that in. And I'm just picking up a little bit of white to blend mine in. Like I said, this is kind of a nice little very forgiving sky because there's a lot of turbulence going on, lots of color. And you don't want to go too much out of here or you'll start dry brushing your actual pigment off of your brush. some of my landscape. I'm going to pick up my number three with that. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick up some more black and touch in with this blue again that we had. I'm going to have a tiny touch of this red. Just to give me almost a royal blue color. I'm going to go ahead and put in some lines of my landscape where that's going to touch. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw in maybe some mountain line or hill just where the water, maybe a breaker where that water just touches. And if some of it actually can work to your benefit if where your brush 
maybe has made light and dark, then use that to your benefit as some of your lines for the edge of your breakers. In some case, maybe it would be a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. You can just kind of use it to your advantage. And that's kind of about where I'm going to have my lighthouse is going to be sitting and to where my edge of my water line is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry just a little bit more. I think in some of my area up here, since I've backed away from a, min a minute, I'd like to maybe just hit this one area a little bit smooth those edges around. You can always go back into it. You're not always set right there of what you have to do. I'm going to go ahead now. I'm still with my uh, number three. And I'm going to go ahead. Since we're here and we're going to start getting into some of this water, I'd like to go ahead and get some of the blue. Now I'm going to go into some of this green down here too. I'm going to make this kind of a teal turquoise kind of a color down here at the bottom. I'm going to get some white into this. And over here in my corner, this is going to actually be where my landscape line is. This is going to be where a lot of these rough edges of this water and it's breaking. But I'm just going to go ahead and kind of give me a little bit of a line. And you can eye this if you want. You can measure it with your brush. Um, if you're going to do it with your measure it with your brush, you want to go from basically your brass part of your brush to where it hooks onto the wood. And as far as on this side, you can almost go to from your wood handle to where it, it hits. So I could even go up a little bit more. some areas I'm just going to go ahead and just with the blue alone just this blue we'll go back and we'll get some highlights some darker colors and the black and the white but right now and so if it's not exactly in color if you don't have it exactly all like one shade of blue that's okay And you don't want to drip. You want enough pigment on your brush. And if you want to switch on back to your number four, that will only give you a little bit more coverage. A lot of times I paint fairly with a big brush. Um, at home I paint with a big brush. I get a lot of brush, a lot of color on my brush at that time. And I can paint fairly fast when I'm doing it that way. So for me, it helps. But for those of you at home that maybe <clears throat> you don't paint as fast or you don't feel comfortable painting with a big brush, um, you can stick with your number three at this time. But I have switched to back to my number four. Again, I'm just kind of laying some color in here. Some areas I might even want this to have a little bit of uh, yellow in here. Picked up a tiny bit of yellow on my brush. I 
because your sea isn't always just blue. Again, I do paint my edges, so this time I'm going to go ahead and get the bottom of my canvas. Also know that my um, for about from the wooden part of my handle from the wooden part of my handle vertical this goes up a little bit higher so I'm kind of bringing that up just a little bit I would like to see that up just a hair higher Now we're going to go ahead and get caught up here in the middle with us just a little bit. And all I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of white on my brush. And I would also like to pick up a little bit of just blue. Still just picking up a little bit of white. I've not really rinsed my brush out. I am going to pick up a little bit of this tint of red. I'd like to add a little bit of that down here in my water. And I'm just going to go ahead and blend it in with some white. And then I'm going to go ahead and start bringing in a little bit more blue. Just mixing it in kind of where I had the red. Again, I'm just blending with a little bit of white. Doing this back and forth, crisscross method still. Start picking up a little bit of darker colors here in some places in this ocean where I think they're going to be a little bit darker in areas of my waves. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white. I'm just going to kind of layer that into kind of where we've already been a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect along there. Don't worry about it. We'll go back into it a little bit more. Right now we're just kind of getting this C roughed up a little bit here. And we'll go back into it. You don't have to worry too much about your blending technique right now. You're just trying to get this ocean kind of the way you've, the waves, the way it fills right before a storm. I would like to darken up some of my area in my background here. I'm going to use blue. And I'm going to use red. And I'm also going to get a little bit of black in there. Again, it's just blue, red, 
and some black. A little bit more blue. I'm going to pick up my number three. Kind of rinse that out just a little bit. Blot it out for me. Maybe a little bit more black. And in some of this area, ooh, we got a little bit of red on there. That was a little bit too much. No mistakes, right? We'll have it fixed. We'll cover it up here. No one will ever know. Yes, I picked up a little bit of red on my number three. going to kind of blot some of this area in almost to make this look like there is maybe a breaker underneath here. Now if it's too much of a look for me I can kind of blot it out even a little bit more like maybe rock or I want it to appear like um, it's just a rough terrain. It doesn't have to be exactly a smooth layer. And by doing that, just to kind of make that look like a little bit more rocky area, fluctuating the area a little bit with how I'm moving my brush, my number three, around. I'm not really doing a, a nice, flat, smooth stroke at all. I'm kind of getting it out of line. I want it to be very rough as if there's possibly, this is rock. So it's not exactly smooth on me. I'm just gonna kinda keep bringing that down. You can get that same effect sometimes if you use a sponge. If anyone's familiar with using a, sp a sponge and laying down lines, you can also kinda get the same effect. This, I'm just kind of using my brush, just kind of moving it around as I go. Just getting a rough look. If you ever use a palette knife, those are fun to use too. You can kind of get different effects and textures with a palette knife. even wad up a paper towel. Experiment while we've got this time, while you've got time at home. Maybe you would like to experiment a little bit more with some of their techniques. Now's a good time to do it. It in. 
And if it gets really dry on your brush and you need a little bit more dampness on your brush, get a little bit more water on there. Right now I'm going to add a little bit of red. Just a little bit down in here. Right now all I'm doing is meeting up my landscape to my water. But you really won't end up seeing this once we start putting the waves that are splashing in and around the breaker. You won't notice it as much. Kind of making this more of a very thin, transparent kind of consistency at this point in some of these areas just to give it a little bit of tint and I want my brush to be able to move around fairly easily so I don't want to have it too thick because then it prevents me from moving it around. Right now we're just going to go ahead and let this dry a little bit. like to go ahead and maybe put out a little bit of some of these waves that's going to be going in. I'm still using my number three. Some areas I'm just going to go ahead and start bringing in some of these little waves in just a tiny bit. I'm going to switch to my number four. And I've kind of just added just a little bit of white. I'm not really taking it all off. Just adding a little bit more color. I want some of these lines. So that it looks like more of the wave. I'm going to tone this down to a very slightly gray. It's almost like a blue, white, and there is a little bit of black here. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a hair in some of these little areas want to make sure that I've got this where I know this is going to appear like this is water or a wave in the background. Moving it out just a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and just pick up some white. I want this pretty thin. I'm going to go ahead and pick up some of these areas right along the, shore, the shoreline right here. Before we go much further, I want to make sure that I've got some of these in. Now I'm just using some white. And if you feel more comfortable using a number one, you can always pick up your number one. I use my number three a lot because I can feel like I can get a very thick line or I can get a very thin line. If you're using your number three and you want it to be a little bit thinner, you can always squeeze your brush together. And then that makes a very, very, very fine line that you can get right in there and get smaller, finer lines. 
if you need a smaller line to go in some of your areas that maybe you want to give more detail. Again, right now I'm just adding a little bit of lines to my shoreline. a little bit more detail into my water if I find that I want to lighten in some areas a little bit more. Some of the areas it's going to be where the actual water, some of these waves, the froth of the waves are going to come in. I'm going to go ahead and add some of that in. I want it to be a little bit thicker on my, laying it a little bit thicker on my canvas. So that gives it a little bit more time to dry. I'd like to see it maybe a little bit more color. Go back in with some of this blue, maybe even a little tiny bit, pick up a little bit of green in here. I'd like to see a little bit more in my water here, just a tad. If you ever notice when the waves catch the light. A lot of times you'll see this green color in the ocean too. And just by putting this in, I'm just kind of going back and forth with the crisscross method, just weaving it into the fabric of my canvas just a little bit more. If it's not green enough for me, I'd like a little bit more. adding a little bit of yellow to my blue and my white. going to go ahead and pick up my number one. This is our number one. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of get the idea of where this 
lighthouse is going to go on my canvas. For myself, it's about two widths for the brass that holds your brush, your bristles. So for me, it would be about right here. This is where the beginning of my house or my lighthouse keeper, his home, is going to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and just make this little mark here. Now, his house is no bigger than from the bristle from here to the brass part. So we don't want that to be any bigger than that. And that would include his roof too. So that's kind of the height of his whole house. And that includes his roof. Now, if you want to go ahead and put in the roof of the rest of his house, it's going to go to about one whole line to the brass part to another whole line of the brass part, almost. Because you're not going to see all that because you're going to end up seeing the actual tower of the lighthouse. And if it does, if it's not exactly, don't worry about it. This is your own little lighthouse, so it can be different. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put in the other side of his roof there. And this would be the roof of his house. And if you want to make that come out a little bit more, you can change your landscape a little bit now since we're kind of putting this in. come out a little bit more. Think about painting, you can always change it. I'm going to go ahead and put the little actual top of his lighthouse. I'm just sketching this in. So this can this can change doesn't have to, I don't have to keep it like this. I can move things around. If I don't like it that way. I can still move it around just a little bit. I have that option. But that's going to be kind of like what I think right now this is good for me. The same thing with your number one. If you need a f flat, more of a distinct, detailed line, you can do the same thing. Flatten that out a little bit. And that brings out your line a little bit more. is off in the distance, so I'm just kind of making my lines and my colors a little muted. They don't have to be real, real, real distinct because it is off in the distance. You want it to be a little bit muted, your colors. Not so dark. There is a little chimney right up here on his little house. Looks like maybe he's got some smoke going up in that chimney. We can go ahead and even add some of that up there if you want. And if it's too dark, I'm going to lighten it up just a hair. We don't want it too dark, but we don't want it... And once that uh, calms down a little bit, it will fade a little bit in your fabric of your canvas. It does change.
just adding a little bit more color onto his house. Just bringing some of that color down. just a little bit I think that I'd like to see my sky just a little bit darker in this area so I'm going to go ahead just make it just a tad darker no mistakes remember you can kind of do it yourself 
but in this area right here, just a little bit more, maybe a little bit darker. Now I'm just going to go ahead and keep moving my brush around again, doing this kind of crisscross method a little bit. But I do want it to be just a hair darker in through here. Always go back, pick up a little bit more white so that it blends it a little bit more with me. But not a lot. We can always bring those rocks back in worry about that either. If you change a little bit of something, don't be afraid to do that. Don't be so stuck with thinking, uh-oh, I can't change it now. I've already here. I can't do anything else. You can. You can always go back, change it around a little bit, add more color. Don't think you're stuck because you're not. Take time, take time to breathe a little bit. It's such a stressful time that we're going through right now. So just take a little bit of time to breathe for yourself. Develop your own individual style, your own individual personality. It's kind of easy right now. It's going to come out. Okay, I'm going to kind of add a little bit light white, picking up a little bit on my brush on my number three. Not really rinsed it out a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of add. Maybe in some of these areas, some more highlight where these waves are coming in. Add a little bit even in some of my water. Still using my number three to move some of this around. So using, just picking up a little bit of white. back with my number one. I'm going to go back 
back into my lighthouse a little bit more. I'm going to go into this kind of a black. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of brown. I don't want it to be a solid, heavy black. I want it to be a little bit more than gray. So we're just going to add a little bit of variation, a little bit to this color here. Now with my actual lighthouse, I'm just going to draw it in. Basically like an outline, kind of like you're coloring. Again, if you need your brush to be a little bit more line detailed, you can go ahead, pinch it together. Right here it's just kind of a blue and black is what I'm adding together. Getting almost a deep tur turquoise kind of teal color. And it's just the blue and black. really trying to put in exact lines. I'm just adding just a little bit so that your eye does tell that there's definite lines going on in your painting and it uh, completes it a little bit. go any further, I'd like to put a little bit of white in the background of this house. And then we'll add the light and then also some of the light that's coming out from the light from the lighthouse. I'm going to pick up my number three again. 
want to go ahead and maybe just with my, I've, I've pinched it together. Now this is a whole other color, whatever was on my brush. I'm not really changing it. And I'm just adding some lines going down my water. I don't know if you can see this. This is very, very thin. It's almost like a glaze. Now then when this dries, you'll barely be able to see it. But it's enough for me to know that it's there. That I've kicked up a little bit of mist. I'm still going to use my number three. Now I'm going to start picking up some of this kind of gray color that we've got here. That we've got going. And I'm just going to add just a little bit more into my water in different areas. To give it just a little bit more depth in my water. And I'm using my number three. If you would be more comfortable using your number one, you can use your number one just the same. But I am using my number three. And I'm just kind of going up and around some of these where it looks like possibly this is a wave. So I'm going up just to give it a little bit of depth underneath it that this wave is coming at me. I'd like to maybe add some a little bit more into this area underneath here. You can do that too. And if you still want it to be a little bit darker, you can add a little bit more dark to this. This just kind of adds a little bit more depth to your water. And some of this area, I can even add a little bit of green to this. Almost make it um, a camouflage almost kind of a dirty green color. If it's too, you don't have enough water on your brush, it's going to drag on you a little bit. Again, if you don't have enough water, will drag and then you will dry brush a little bit. So you always want to make sure you've got an adequate amount of water on your brush when you're painting. Just kind of be creative of how you're putting it on. It doesn't have to be exact. Going to bring in some more of your waves. You can always bring in a little bit more waves going on. more in my shoreline. I'm going to kind of lose that line that really shows that that's my shore. I want it to extend that up and over a little bit. Do the same with over on this side. I want to bring my line up to where my waves are and where we kind of darken that up or lighten this up over here. We kind of lost this line. I'm going to kind of bring that back. 
just going to be using my blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of black. Kind of bring this line in a little bit more. If that's too much, I can dull it down a little bit. Some more blue. Again, some areas like this, um, you can always use a sponge, a wadded up paper to get this kind of a um, look. You don't want it to be exact. You don't want it to be a real refined look. You want it to be almost something that just goes into the background. Listen, man. Hey, yo. Number one. And with my number one, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow, just like this. White, a little bit of yellow. Got this kind of a nice little white yellow here. And I'm just going to touch it right here into my lighthouse. That's all I'm going to do at this point. Let that dry for a minute. Looks like I got a little bit of white there. Fix that. Alright. Now I would go like to go ahead and with still with my number one. I'm gonna make some of these little seagulls in the background. Don't get too stressed about these. They're kind of just fun little birds. And if you want to practice, you can always practice before you uh, put it on your canvas. Just picked up a little bit of white. This is pretty transparent. Gonna pretty make it real nice, little thin. I'll go ahead and kind of show you here on my palette. You can just kind of make these little loop de loop kind of things, and they're very simple to make. We'll go ahead and make a couple here. Again, I'm just picking up some white, and if I need to make that lighter, we can always go lighter. I'm going to go ahead and just, for one line, it's just going to be one line like that. That's the body. And then we're going to go ahead and bring out a wing. Here's another wing, a side of a wing. And then you're just going to go ahead and bring it down, up, up and over. These are just the wings. Okay. We'll go ahead and make another one down here. Again, we're going to make its body. And this one, we'll just go ahead and kind of make his wings very, very wide, like he's a wide angle. And you can make the you can make as many as you want. It's simpler if it's. A little bit thin. If your water, you've kept it kind of thin on your brush. You do want to make sure that you pinch your brush together a little bit. And you can make as many of these in here as you want. does work a little bit better if you've got a pretty thin mixture so it's very thin I'm actually having trouble with my uh, brush
use my number two to see if I can get a thinner brush. A thinner bird. That might work a little bit better. If you're having trouble getting that thin with your number one, you can always switch to your number two. And again, all I'm doing is going and grabbing a little bit of white and making these his body and then wings. In some areas, if you want to whiten that up a little bit more, make it more pronounced, you can go back into it, add a little bit more white. And all around the bottom of this shoreline, I wanted to make it almost appear that you lose the idea of what is the wave and what is your seagull. Is kind of what I was trying to imply that you kind of lose it when you you can't tell what's different anymore. Um, so I added just a lot of little lines here just to get that idea. that I want to maybe just more evident out there, more of a wave, the cresting of a wave. Go ahead and pick up a little bit more blue, a little bit more yellow. Some of these areas I'd like to add just a little bit darker area in my water. I've added blue, yellow, and a little bit of green. And some of these areas I'd like it to be a little bit darker. I'm going to have to switch to my number three again. very thin, kind of a translucent in some areas. So I want to add, I want to cover a little bit of distance.
Now I'd like to go ahead and put some of the lines that we've got going through this lighthouse a little bit. I'm going to pick up, use my number one for this. I'm going to get a little bit of white, pretty thin. And I just want to go ahead and, and draw a line across my canvas. Now, if you're not, if it doesn't go exactly, if you're kind of wobbly, that's okay because it's the fog, so it doesn't have to be exact. And I'm just kind of drawing a few lines across there, just like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead in some cases. If you notice that when light shines through, you see almost like a dimness, and some might be a little bit wider, lighter in color. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of pick up a little bit more white. Some areas even show that there's a little bit of a lighter area going through in some of this. We want to kind of, like it's going, clear across. We have enough for the ships to be seen, our aircrafts. You want to be able to see this. Now you can kind of see where some of your birds, you've lost some of your definition of your birds. So if you want to go back in, give them a little bit of a boost, you can bring them back in now. Again, I'm still working on my lines here a little bit. like to go ahead and bring in even a little bit of yellow in with my line here. So I'm just going to bring out a little bit of yellow into that. Make it a little pair, a little bit, just a little bit more. Now since we've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of black. Still using my number one, and I don't want this to be real deep in color. Just going to put the sides to where my little lighthouse. I'm just going to bring these down. And they don't have to be totally. I want it to be a little bit off. Because I don't want you to be able to see straight through it. I want it to be as if you've got the light really blasting there in the background of it. And if you want to straighten up any of your edges, I'm going to go ahead and put some of his little lights on because there's some lights on in that little house. Again, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and yellow. Just a very, very, very light shade. Pinch my brush in pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and just put in some little lights where I think there might be some little maybe lights on in this little cabin. And all I did was just kind of go up and touch them. I'm not really making it so much look like a window. You can if you want to bring it down a little bit. But I'm just kind of touching it. Got a little bit of gray. And right here along the edges of this little 
lighthouse. Again, I'm going to go ahead and pinch this down pretty good so I can get a nice detailed line. Just going to go ahead and put these little, almost like fluted lines just around the top of my house here. Again, I'm just using just a little bit of black, but I'm also going to put this little area where maybe this is another area where there probably is a light, maybe. Maybe there's a door down here. It just doesn't have to be real dark. It doesn't have to be real detailed. Sometimes it's almost better if it's just the idea that you've got it there. I think there might be another little light, a little, little window right here maybe. And these will change once your painting does dry up on you. It will change a little bit. Just kind of making my breaker lines here just a little bit. Again, if you want to add some more white to any of your seagulls here, just pick up a little bit more white on your brush now that you've in already once before. And that just gives it a little bit of highlight on that bird. Makes it pop out just a little bit more. If you want to add another one up here, you can add as many as you want. trying to almost make it appear where you lost the definition of water versus the actual birds. Just have fun with these little birds. You can make them go any way you want. Still got my number one. Just adding a few more lines, just a little bit more, maybe definition. But where I want just a little bit more highlights. Definition in my water. switch to my number three. I always seem to cover a little bit more area with that. But you can always use your number one or even a number two. Um, I just like to be able to cover a little bit more space. And 
as you can see, I'm getting almost a little bit of, I'm using a very, very, very thin, almost transparent, you can see I can get really through there. just by using a pretty thin mixture at this point. I can go back in, and add a little bit more color if I want, a little bit more texture. Pay a little bit more attention to lines and detail. in any areas up. I can certainly do that too at the same time. Hi again, thanks for painting with me this evening. I hope everybody had a good time. We'll be doing it again. Feel free to join us at any time. I hope everybody had a good time. Thanks for joining me again tonight.